Okay, folks. Well, this is an unusual way of uh, preparing a movie. I mean, unusual to me. Professionals do it all the time. But um, I went to a very special place and the wind was so bad you couldn't hear me speak. This is a special recording for my wife Vivian. I wanted to show her this beautiful little church which I was familiar with in the district of Dartmoor. So I'm just showing the kind of approach shots as it were. This is outdoors. This was when I was in England just a couple of weeks ago. And uh, Dartmoor and the wild English countryside looking very beautiful. And there on top of that tiny hill is a little, a little something. Uh, I first saw it um, from about 10 miles north of here on a stormy night. The clouds swept aside and there I saw that kind of very distant something. I didn't even know what it was, but I eventually tracked down the fact that it's a tiny church. I mean, a very tiny church, as you'll see. Um, we'll gradually work our way closer and closer here. Uh, this is from less than half a mile away. Park the car. Uh, it's a very special and very dear little place, and as I said, I'm very much looking forward to taking Vivian there someday. It's called Brent Tor Church. A tor is a, a hilltop in this part of the world. Uh, here's the, the board for the church. As you can see, the name is St. Michael de Roop. That's the, the dedication. Uh, it's pretty small, <laughs> as you'll see, but it, do, it still is active and still actually holds services. Uh, it was a beautiful sunny day, but the wind on Dartmoor can be extremely loud and wild and uh, couldn't hear anything for the roaring, so I decided to overdub it. Here we go. All right, this is, uh, as we enter the field, this is a little gateway. It's called a kissing gate. I don't know who has it apart from English people, but it's a very old-fashioned traditional kind of gate. Uh, you can uh, block a person coming through, uh, and the price was a kiss, so it was often called a kissing gate. A man would get behind the gate and hold one side, and the girl couldn't pass unless she kissed him. But of course, it was really to keep livestock out. Livestock can't find their way through that trap there. Okay, so as we go further up the hill here, uh, we're getting closer and closer and higher and higher, and you can see there's a pretty spectacular view here of the district called uh, Dartmoor and there above us is the little church. We're getting quite close now. By this time I was getting out of breath anyway, huffing and puffing up the hill. But this is what the faithful had to do every Sunday. Well, actually only if it was fine weather. Here we are, just uh, coming up to a little gateway. And as you see, although it's closed, it does say, please enter. It's quite inviting, really. And so we'll go inside. We'll push open the little gate. Nothing locked here, nothing valuable at all. Uh, we're in the porchway. This is centuries old, of course, this church. And here's a little sign, look, saying, even song is there on uh, Sunday evenings except when it's wet. If it's wet, they quite sensibly move the service down to the other church in the village. Here's me opening the door. Now, this was a huge creaky door. You missed the fun of that. It made a huge creaking noise when I entered. <laughs> but here we are inside. Uh, lighting's very different, but the camera seems to be handling it pretty well. There are seating here for about 35 people or so. Uh, it's quite pretty and it's well maintained. As you can see, there's a little pulpit wound with ivy. If we go down, let's take a closer look at the altar area. Um, there's the, uh, oh look, there's some plaques on the wall. Yeah, I took a look at those. This was somebody who died in 1916 in Mesopotamia, so that was a World War I fatality. And then a little further along is another plaque. This is to commemorate uh, a master mariner called Roland Cox and his uh, ship, the Nav Navasota, went down in the Second World War. So he's also commemorated on this plaque. Okay, and then we go and look further up the aisle. There's some beautiful flowers. Those were fresh, so somebody had been there quite recently. 
Uh, no hymns posted. Look, just some IV posted. That's where the hymn numbers get posted, though. And the lectern with the readings. It's a very special place. It has a wonderful, warm, dignified feeling. A little bit of stained glass. It's just very tiny. I don't think it's the tiniest church, but it's noticeably tiny. And as I said, I like it very much. And uh, I saw it in one wild, stormy, romantic... It was not like something out of Tolkien, you know, the clouds swept aside and sunlight being fractured everywhere. It was wild and wonderful. And it, I couldn't even see what it was in the distance, just a building on a hilltop. It could have been a fairy tower for all I knew. Anyway, eventually I tracked it down as a church. Look, it's still uh, lighted by gas. The little gas mantle, the old-fashioned thing, is missing there. Um, but all somebody has to do is replace it. You pull the lever and light the gas fire, and that's how it's uh, how it was illuminated. Anyway, there's still uh, that's still present. Look, you can see the little man. This is present here in this globe. That's the little mantle, and it glows brightly. Um, I presume it's run from a gas bottle or, or a container outside, rather than the pipe supplied from the mains. Look, here's the font. Pretty little font. I wonder when the last person was christened there in this font. How long ago? Well, could have been just a few weeks ago. Could have been decades ago. And here's a, a closed-off area. It's locked. You've no access. Not really. Well, there is a clue to what this is about. If you Here's some family coat of arms, by the way. Uh, the two kinds of coats of arms. So presumably that's some male and female lines. Local aristocracy. Quite typical, that, in Britain. Anyway, as I say, it's kept locked. It's not a crypt, though, or a mini chapel. Uh, the clue is, if we look upwards, you can see holes in the ceiling. And I know what those are. I used to be a bell ringer at my church when I was a kid. Uh, those are rope holes where the ropes come down from the bells. don't know if there are any bells up there anymore, but there certainly aren't any ropes, so there's no bell ringing. But, you know, that's common, isn't it, these days? A lot of left-wingers and... Uh, people who don't contribute much to society apparently have a tiny minority but apparently have all the rights and if they don't like bell ringing and church worship and things they can put a stop to it even though the majority are quite happy and even though we belong to a religious Christian community it seems that it offends 1% of the people and as I said it's always the 1% that doesn't do any work and doesn't do anything much just make trouble apparently Anyway, there we are, pretty little church, so on the way out, uh, very bright, uh, back into the very bright sunlight. Well, that's where you hang your hats and coats, look, before you go into the church. And then uh, I went outside uh, and decided to just do a big panoramic shot. So there you are, that's from the hilltop and outside the church. Just look at that. It's wild. It's called Dartmoor. It's famous for ponies and a very dark, forbidding prison. But you can see 360 degrees from here. I'm sorry for the camera jumping. It's just a simple handheld thing. In fact, it's only about the size of a matchbox. It's not a cell phone camera. It's more sophisticated than that. But there we go. So that's Brent Tor Church in Dartmoor, in Devon. And this recording, as I said, was a special gift for Vivian. I still want to take her. It's a bit romantic, really. Hmm. That tiny little car down there is the vehicle I drove up in. So, there we go.